The return of my coin lady channel brings me much joy. When it comes to XRP and the XRP ledger, Axlar has been one of the biggest developments. This name keeps coming up in discussions about institutional DeFi and DeFi on the XRP ledger, so I'm going to stress it again, pay attention to this name because we're going to talk about it in this video. Although this study is from April, it emphasizes the XRP ledger's connection with the AMM and Axilla. To increase the protocol's uptake by institutions, we're looking into on-chain regulatory compliance features with top-tier Ripple and the XRP ledger. In order to entice investors, developers, and traders, Ripple believes that X-chain messaging protocols will be crucial. The complete report is finally at our fingertips now. Here is our XRP ledger. Blockchain technology works with cross-chain DeFi. Ripple and the XRP ledger work together closely. The AMM protocol, developed by the blockchain community, is an automated market maker that has enhanced the XRP ledger ecosystem with powerful decentralized finance features. Ripple's newly unveiled XLS 30M protocol is part of their collaboration with the XRP ledger community. It will allow cross-chain DeFi applications across 50 different blockchains and improve the DeFi functionality inside the XRP Ledger ecosystem. Now we know it's more than 60, thanks to Axler's meteoric rise in popularity. One notable exception is XRP Ledger, whose decentralized exchange has long used antiquated methods of order book management that aren't compatible with the more modern DeFi protocols. But the AMM is a big step towards better DeFi options on the XRP ledger, and Ripple has introduced it. Ripple claims that the AMM is a starting point for DeFi developments on the XRP ledger in the future. Additionally, DeFi solutions developed on the XRP ledger, blockchain, are anticipated to have improved interoperability and value through interaction with cross-chain messaging services such as Axlar. From what we can gather, this has been going on since June of 2022. Here's the rundown. The AMM does not yet have built-in compliance functionalities, but by integrating it with existing order book mechanisms, liquidity providers can take advantage of increased yield opportunities, and traders can enjoy better price discovery. Traders at the retail level and large financial institutions alike are among Ripple's target users. To further strengthen institutional adoption of the protocol, Ripple and XRP Ledger are looking into incorporating on-chain regulatory compliance features. Ripple also thinks that the cross-chain messaging protocols will be very important in luring investors, developers, and traders from all around the world's blockchain networks. Passive income production is, in my opinion, the foundation upon which all of this rests. Consider this from a purely elementary perspective. Sure. Ripple is making and will eventually build all the necessary tools to create an institutional DeFi marketplace with liquidity pools and yield-generating pools. Anyone can join, tap into the liquidity pools, and start earning a ton of percentage yield. Or, what's more? On the XRP ledger, we now have things like tokenized real estate, where investors may purchase two homes with tokens equal to 5-10% to of the property's value and then earn 5 to 10% in annual income from those properties. If tokenized marketplaces and DeFi are to be considered together, we would love to see one that operates similarly. We begin to perceive this vision coming to fruition at that point. However, critical DeFi tools such as the AMM functionality and the soon-to-be-released lending and borrowing protocol are essential for this cross-chain interoperability and for getting us to this point. That amendment is still being worked on, but it's one that I'm really hoping will pass. I'll be keeping a careful eye on it. In June, though, Ripple did provide us with a detailed breakdown, which you can find here as well. Analysis of the EVM side chain failure. So that's what we got. Additionally, they provided us with a glimpse of the new possibilities in DeFi and RWA. Yet again. This expands on my earlier prediction that, as we delve deeper into this, a new economy based on tokenized assets and liquidity pools that generate yield will emerge on the XRP ledger. In every way, this goes against the grain of potential passive income sources. This fills me with joy. When we consider the Axler Bridge in its entirety, this is the culmination of all our long-standing discussions. Yeah, that bridge. Along one side, we have the XRP Ledger mainnet, 
on the other, we have the EVM sidechain, and in the middle, we have Axlar. As we can see, there are two separate sidechains here, Institution X, which is private, and Enterprise, which is a bespoke chain that uses the XRP Ledger EVM. Why? Guess what? Institutions and businesses, once again. The two of them have. In addition to having a large user base, they also have a substantial financial backing. Many opportunities for yield production and passive income will become available as a result of the value that institutions bring. Another thing I'm sure of is that we will eventually be able to lend out XRP, maybe through liquidity pools. However, due to the significant level of risk involved, I would not recommend lending your XRP on a liquidity pool at this time. In my opinion, we should hold off until regulations are in place, as that will provide us with a considerably more secure chance. On the other hand, we will have rules that will provide us with some relief, like a light at the end of a tunnel. Fortunately, we have a plan to help us navigate it. Xero is also still growing, so that's something else we have here. In fact, this is involving Deutsche Bank. According to Deutsche Bank, there is a butterfly effect that encourages institutional adoption due to interoperability. The quotation also notes that interoperability can cause a domino effect. Other beneficial outcomes follow as well. It encourages adoption because I can easily access things on different chains without worrying about the complexities of public-private key management. Now keep in mind that major players like Deutsche Bank are also aware of and collaborating with Ripple, and that XRP drops to this. Here we have a breakdown of their use of Ripple for cross-border payments, and they actually highlight the crucial significance of blockchain in future banking as one of the necessary infrastructural components. Seeing my video is an honor. Bye for now, and please subscribe and like my channel.